Okay, so today I'm going to show you a typical Russian apartment in Moscow. Stay tuned because at the end I'll be telling you exactly how much it costs to rent, how much for electric, water, utilities, things like that. Uh, I've picked out an apartment that is absolutely standard in terms of renovation. It's right down the middle in terms of the building, the lift, all that type of thing. I've tried to pick one right in the medium level. The apartment's probably slightly bigger than an average apartment here, but otherwise everything would be, yeah, what you could expect if you're someone of absolute average income. Um, you can see in the background here, the buildings in the distance. Over there is where the metro is. So again, we're kind of medium distance, a 10 minute walk from the metro, the underground subway area. So let's take a look and uh, hopefully you'll find what a typical apartment in Russia looks like an interesting video. So here's the building we're going to. It's a big building, as you see. So we're heading inside. Have a look at some of the cars parked out here so you get an idea. So these brands you'll be familiar with, Volvo, Honda, Toyota, we're coming towards the end of winter now so the snow is melting, it's getting a bit messy. So we're coming to the entrance of the building here. What you'll find in Russia is that at the breakup of the USSR, people were given their flats and therefore there's not really any good or bad areas so there's no kind of no-go zones or anything like that. And what you get is people that are on the wealthy end of the spectrum living with people who you would say are on the relatively poor end of the spectrum. All that's different is the renovation inside of the flat is better for the people that have more money. But that accountability of people of different incomes means there's very little crime, there's very little disagreements between people, there's a lot of accountability amongst neighbours. Um, people don't tend to lock their doors on each floor, neighbours share ingredients for food when they need something, all things like that. So a bit more of a kind of older school culture perhaps that our grandparents would have grown up with in England or in America. But uh, yeah, so as I say, you can find old cars here and new cars. It could be someone, your neighbour could be someone who drives a Rolls Royce and you could be someone that drives a very old ladder. It's very common like that. So nearly all doors and entrances have a two-door system. You have the first door where you can ring on the phone for people's apartments to let you in. And a second door acts as like a second barrier for security. And then some of the buildings have concierge 24 hours a day. Some don't. It really is a mix. This one does. Let's go in. I'll show you. Go into the first one. Through the second one. So you see here we have concierge working in this building. You have everybody's letter boxes. You see everybody always has tradition here in Russia, collects batteries down here because obviously they're disposed a different way. That's how your entrance looks. So we'll head up to the, the flat. Okay, and as is the case, nearly all these buildings have two lifts. Um, so we'll go up. Okay. We're going up to the fifth floor. This is again, absolutely kind of standard mid-range lift. There's lots of buildings that have newer lifts in them now but some still have the very old ones, but this is quite an old one, but I want to show you something representative of the truth of something absolutely standard in the medium. So with all, as always, they will have the rubbish chute like this. So you can put small items of rubbish in your chute and obviously it's collected down the bottom and you have the stairwell if the lifts aren't working. As you'll see in the stairwell, obviously it's not beautiful or anything, but again, there's not graffiti, there's not people smoking or sleeping in here, anything like that. Because again, everybody is held accountable by their neighbors. 
and therefore you feel safe. Women walk up these stairs any time of day or night and can feel safe. There's very low crime in these flats. So we're heading to the flat itself. Okay, in the corridor, you see they have a pull-up bar there. And there's two flats there. You have the electric water. That's a bit crazy. And then two more flats there. And people keep bikes and winter things there. So you've got floor four flats in total on each floor. Russia tends to have these pretty big secure doors. So if we go in, you see we've got built-in cupboards here. And so we'll start here, going into the kitchen. So the first door here is like a storage area, pantry, I might call it. And then after that, we have a, a toilet. So in Russia, this is uh, very common to have a toilet like this. So what they tend to do, they tend to have toilet separate to the bath and shower area, which I like. I like it to be separated off. Uh, it's very common here. So then we go here into the kitchen. See here, pretty good space. Like that. So I would say if we take the kind of renovation in this, this is absolutely standard. Of course, you can find lots worse than this, but you can also find lots to a higher, newer specification than this. So what I'm trying to show you here is an absolute kind of standard renovation in Moscow, where it's been probably done in the last five to six years with not very expensive materials, but that look you know, fairly modern and okay, and probably perfect if you own a flat and want to rent out to people. So if we continue the tour here, so you see this is where we came in. This was the bathroom door and then the pantry there, and then the door that we came in on. And then we have all these fitted cupboards all the way along here. You can see all the sliding doors. Um, and then you have the main living room. So if we go in and have a look in here. So this is a, what they call three bed flat. What that means is it has two bedrooms, one living area, and then you have the kitchen and bathroom. The size of this is around 95 square meters. So it's suitable for anywhere between, I would say a family of four, you know, two people up to four, I would say like that could live here comfortably. But it's a nice spacious room as you see. Um, it's got these nice bay windows like this. In Russia, everybody tends to have these net curtains Obviously, you live in flats, although the other flats are quite a long way away. People just like that privacy, so tend to keep it like that. But yeah, very big, nice, spacious room. Again, everything very sort of standard here. If you look at the furniture, this is, you know, nothing particularly nice, but not bad either. But yeah, I'm trying to show you absolutely kind of what is a standard Russian flat. You can go off into the next room which is this is the main bedroom here so as you see again good size really and yeah again has this building cupboard area and you've got windows on the back here let's have a look there's a balcony take a look out there so the balcony is not heated i think they very rarely are in russia of course some people transform the balconies but as here People using it more like a storage area, that's very common. Yeah, see out the window here. So that window there would belong to the neighbor. Yeah, yeah, there's a road out there as you see. But still, good to have a balcony area for storage and just to come out, perhaps some fresh air. So, 
Let's meet. Two more rooms. We've got so we've got the main bathroom here now. So a washing machine, which is common in Russia, people have here a bath. Uh, yeah, and area. And as I say, without the toilet, the toilets are almost always separate in Russia. Um, so I'm not sure where you're from. I see. I grew up in England, and usually the toilet was always in the um, in with the bath or the shower. So. Slightly different here, but as I say, I'd prefer it that way. Let me know what it's like where you live and which country you're in. So then we go to the next room. Now, obviously, this has been used, I think, uh, kind of as a room. I, I guess they're using it a spare room as opposed to a bedroom, but obviously it could quite easily be a bedroom. Um, yeah, but as you see, a good size again. Um, yeah. You can see out the window there. The building's opposite. It's still winter here, snow. Yeah. So there it is. Again, you have this floor here. Not particularly expensive laid, but looks fairly modern. Um, yeah, all looks okay. One thing that is absolute custom here in Russia is when you go into the house from outdoors, you take your shoes off. Nobody walks through the hat house or the flat with shoes on in England. People do that all the time. I always used to, but after living here for a while now, even I find that disgusting to do that. If uh, I go to anyone's house, I immediately take my shoes off, even if they don't when I'm in England or America. But yeah, in Russia, everybody takes their shoes off. And actually, people also immediately, almost immediately get changed into pajamas or other clothes again it's seen as your outdoor clothes uh, dirty and they're not for the home so yeah it's just a culture here to change your shoes and out of your shoes and change your clothes yeah there's the tour of a, what i would say is a typical flat in moscow russia uh, at kind of the middle standard level so let's talk about price the important part so this flat is 65,000 rubles per month, including utilities, your water and electric. Now, 65,000 rubles is exactly 550 pounds sterling in England, or $698, so let's call it $700. So for a 95 square meter flat in Moscow, which is about a 10 minute walk to the metro, and from the metro, it's a direct line, approximately 15 to 17 minutes into the dead center red square of Moscow. That's what it's going to cost you. So that's all your overheads, utilities, plus the fat. So $700 and 550 pounds sterling. So let me know what you think. What do you think of the value of that, considering where we are? Would, is it more expensive in your country? Is it about the same? Of course, people talk about relative to what people earn here. Of course, that's true as well, but many factors are overlooked in Russia, such as healthcare is free, you can go to the doctor, to the dentist, and you don't have to pay anything. So there's a lot of other costs saved here. But yeah, for a flat, that's how much it costs. If you look at average salaries, I think most people who, if they lived alone, would be able to afford this, but are unlikely to have a flat this big anyway. But certainly if you've got a household where there's two or more earners, this kind of flat is very affordable. Uh, and I think it's got everything you need. So I hope you guys found that interesting. Let me know what you thought. Did you expect flats to be more expensive or cheaper? Is this how you thought a kind of standard looking flat in Moscow would look? I'd be very interested to hear your comments. Uh, check out all my other videos and I'll be back with another one very soon.